But what about things that are bad for the microbiome? What's bad for gut health? So I would say there's nothing that's inherently bad in that you have to totally avoid it, right? Palm oil? Uh, palm oil? Palm oil. Um, so this, seed oils is an interesting one, and we can get into it a little bit. So palm oil, seed oils, there's a lot of people on social media saying, like, these are the worst thing for you. And I, what I think is that there's just a massive, well, there's a massive consumption of ultra-processed foods that contain these seed oils, but other additives, like emulsifiers, that might be having negative consequences on the gut and, and overall health. Um, but what I will say is that there's a couple of seed oils that actually might be beneficial. Um, so rapeseed oil is one, all right? I'm talking about cold-pressed rapeseed oil. Okay. Has a lot of polyphenols, a lot of antioxidants. No, oh, no sorry, has a really good omega, omega profile. Um, in animal studies, I don't really like quoting animal studies, but that is the oil that, induces the, the most, like basically it's the most diversity in the gut microbiome when you give it to, to mice. Um, but I think it's just got a bad rep because in the US it's canola oil and th they process it really badly. And you know, But if you have some British cold pressed rapeseed oil, really nice alternative to extra virgin olive oil, you can cook with, has a higher smoking point. So it's pretty safe to cook right. at high temperatures. Right. It's very neutral. So a lot of chefs use it because it doesn't actually affect the taste of the dish. Interesting. Right? So there's that. And then there's, have you heard of, so we're going to probably move on to emulsifiers a little bit here. Yeah. But there's like, there's these lecky things. So they're, they seem to be in everything. You've probably seen it on the back of an ingredient that says soy lecky thin or rapeseed lecky thin. Now, it sounds scary, but actually when you look into the research behind these, these, they're basically fat, fat, right? So um, it's not the, the oil itself, but it's like an extract from it. So you've got soy lecithin and rapeseed lecithin. In animal studies, there's no human trials to really support this, but in animal studies, it leads to an increase in beauty rate producing bacteria when you give them these compounds. So I think they're not inherently bad. Although there isn't human data, I'd probably say they're okay. Did I right. see you do an Instagram post on this? Yeah, we. Yeah, I think I saw this. And yeah. By the way, for the listener, they should watch your Instagram. I I really like it. <laughs> I do genuinely really like it. I've learned a lot from your Instagram. Seriously. Yeah. So we try, we try to offer a diverse range of content. But one thing we've done recently is actually going into supermarkets yeah. and showing yeah. you what yeah. you yeah. should I think, eat. I think that's because that's there's a lot of people yeah. doing the opposite. Yeah. Um. So. These, yeah, so they seem to be an okay emulsifier. The gums, like the guar gum, the acacia gum, they're, they're naturally from plants and they again seem to promote beauty rate producing bacteria. And there's more human studies on them that show actually might reduce cholesterol as Interesting. well. Interesting. So they're probably an okay emulsifier. Yeah. Uh, but they're naturally occurring emulsifiers, right? There's some that are, are more artificial that are added to foods like polysorbate and carboxymethyl cellulose. And these are the ones that, at least in animal studies, are associated with a pro-inflammatory, uh, basically a changes into the gut microbiome that promote inflammation. And there's actually now a human trial, at least one randomized control trial with carboxymethyl cellulose, which showed that at least in relatively high doses within the recommended daily amount, but still quite high, that induced a changes to the gut microbiome in humans that was pro-inflammatory so that promoted inflammation so mm. i think there's a difference between these naturally occurring emulsifiers and additives versus the artificial ones and i think that it's probably a similar story with the artificial sweeteners and the natural sweeteners right? just about to jump into that yeah. so the aspartame versus the stevia yeah. yeah 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 again probably okay every now and again if you want to diet coke that's fine if you if you Incorporating these into your diet every day, at least based on animal studies, there's changes to the microbiome that might be negative. There is a human trial now, I think there's one or two, which show that, again, in a, a di within the de re de recommended daily amount, sorry, I can't speak. It's all good. They, um, they might have some changes to the microbiome, whether they're good or bad, we're not sure in humans, but a couple of them, which I think was sucralose, um, and then I forget the other one actually led to changes in like aspartame. Was it was it aspartame? Led it to changes aspartame. to the glycemic response as well. Yeah. So they're not inherently inert as well, right? 
Some people think that's because of potential molecular mimicry. So the microorganisms chew them up, and in doing so, chew them up into substances that trigger, well, an insulin response, so so glucose. So it's, it's actually the microbiome that's changing the way that they're presented to the body, so they're kind of gobbling them up, which I think is kind yeah, of interesting, yeah. right? Yeah.